Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. Uh, yesterday we did uh, did a video, and in the video I mentioned to people that I would like to uh, have some some comments posted in there about future videos you'd like us to do. So today we're going to do a video uh, comment from Jason Younglove asked about um, the pros and cons versus spill defensive ends or contained or upfield defensive ends. So we're going to do a little video. Um, kind of going through the pros and cons, and then I'm going to discuss a little bit what I think are scenarios for you to spill the ball and scenarios where I would probably want to box the ball or contain the ball back inside. So I appreciate um, all the comments from you guys. I appreciate uh, Jason Younglove asking that question. It's the first video we're going to do on a question asked in the comments section. Right, make sure you check out our sponsors, GameStrat. In the description box below, there'll be a link to take you directly to their site. That's the sideline replay system that we use. We absolutely love it. Difference USA Ultimate Striking Machine. We have one that attaches to our squat rack in the weight room. Um, Just Play Football, which is the diagramming tool that I use to draw plays. It's the only diagram tool to draw plays that I use. Defensive Coordinator One, which is an in-game app that allows you to make in-game adjustments based on live in-game data. All right, and uh, Dome Hats, which is sponsor, major sponsor of Play Fast Football. This is one of my Play Fast hats made by Dome. Uh, they are a uh, Northeast Florida company doing some. Uh, some really good work across the country now. They have a great online uh, custom hat builder where you can generate your own hat as long as you have your own uh, logo. You can generate all the different colors and the style that you want. So make sure you check out Dome Hats. Dome Hats is a major sponsor of our first Play Fast Clinic in January. Just Play Football will have a booth there. Defense Coordinator 1 will have a booth there. Game Strat will have a booth there. So uh, at the end of the video, I'll give you some more information. But make sure you check out our first ever Play Fast Football Clinic. So Jason Younglove wants to know... Um, Pros, cons versus, uh, you know, spilling or possibly being an up the field or a contained player. Pros, cons, here's the way I kind of look at it. Spilling is more of a team scheme type of deal where um, you have to have guys that understand the scheme of what you're trying to do, and then you have to have guys that are willing to be team players because when you spill as a defensive end, you are probably more likely than not, all right, you are taking yourself out of some plays that you um, will not be making in other words, you won't, may not be in the highlight reel making a tackle. It's not a tackle you might make, but by spilling the first block or by spilling and sending the ball where the defense is trying to get it sent, you actually make the play the way the defense is designed to make. So in order to have guys that spill, you have to have team players that are willing to do their job. You have to have kids that understand football that can recognize blocks and, and how to react to those blocks and play off of those blocks. All right, and they have to be very unselfish players. As far as a box or an upfield contained defensive end, to me, I think that is um, a style of play that is a little bit looser and freer for that D end. He can get off the ball and get up the field without worrying about what the tackle does. Uh, he probably feels like he can make more plays all right, in that style of defense. But at the same time, you would have to fit things behind him a little bit differently all right, based on, on how he's playing. So um, I think there's a time for it uh, in our different defensive schemes. We have some deals where we um, purposely try to box the ball, and we have some deals where we absolutely want to spill the ball. Um, I think there's a way uh, – I think both have been successful in the past. Um, if you go back to, uh, you know, years and years ago when a lot of teams were playing more true 50 defense, 3-4 stand-up ends, and they would play boxing ends and, and turn all runs back inside, and then – the game changed a little bit, and spilling became a little bit more prevalent. Um, you know, what I will tell you is, is the reason you will spill the ball is because you want to deny vertical entry into your defense. You want to deny vertical running lanes in your defense. Um, and when you spill the ball and make it go east and west, you're trying to make it go sideways before it goes north and south and gains ground. So that is, you know, to me, schematically why teams would want to spill the ball. Um, you know, ends that are up the field or contain players or box players, however you want to look at it, sometimes can free them up um, to be athletically, uh, you know, a little bit uh, more inclined to make some plays when you let them get off the ball and, and kind of play in a little bit more of a, not so much, I wouldn't say a freelance style, but you're giving them more range to make plays. Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think that style fits if you have kids that either – can't block rec, don't want to block rec, always run around and chase the ball for whatever reason, but they're very good or very athletic players, then 
you may want to incorporate that style into your defense. I just think the biggest point that I would, I would recommend to anybody would be if you choose the style of defense to spill or the style of defense to box or contain, what you do behind that with your structure of coverages and how you fit runs is really the utmost importance because, you know, you, you can't do one without the other. If we're going to spill the ball, we have to play in a structure that allows us to have players ready to play the spill. All right, so it's usually more of a zone-style structure, a structure where you have overhang or defenders that are keying in through under keys or backfield keys to be able to fit runs that are going to be sent to them. If you're playing more of a man-to-man -man or a man-free type scheme, which I'll draw up in a second, that may be a scheme that you may want to box because the players on the outside that are playing man may get run off, and if you spill the ball, you may spill the ball to no one. So if you're going to spill the ball, you have to spill it to somebody, so you have to have a coverage structure and a run-fit structure that is conducive to spilling the ball. And... If you're going to box the ball, then you're also, if you are in a zone structure, you better know how to fit the inside part of, the, the, uh, of how you're boxing those runs. And you also better make sure you understand that, that you know, your coverage structure behind it kind of fits with what you're trying to do with your, um, with your, your contain or box structure. All right, so the first scenario I've got drawn up is just a typical spill scenario. All right, obviously this is one formation. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't... You have to look at every formation, how you would play it, how you're going to play it, you know, how would you play a wing tee formation or a tight end set or a double tight set, or how would you play a flex bone set. You know, all we're talking about right now is the scenario of spill or box and what you would need to do behind it or why you would want to do one or the other. So right now I've got a, a, a defense drawn up for us, a base defense where we would try and spill the football. Okay, so if we had a... If we were playing our old 4-2-5 structure and we had a fullback set to the twin side strong and we plussed our backers a little bit to the twin side, all right, we have two apex players on both sides of the ball, all right, depending on the coverage structure that we're using, that we would like to spill and send the ball to, okay? So if you look at the power play on the front side, if we were facing a team that was going to run a power play and they were going to double a three to try and go back to the wheel, and they were going to back block on the one, all right, and they were going to try and kick this end, and they were going to try and wrap this guard. In this scenario for us, what we would try and do is we would try and get this end off this down block to squeeze and spill the block of the fullback to make the ball go wide. Our Mike linebacker, who's going to be a plus a little bit to that side, would now be ready off of the double team scheme and off of whatever keys we may be reading. He's going to be ready to now scrape paint and fit tight off the DN. And he would be looking, so the offense is looking to get that thing kicked and wrapped inside. Defensively, we're trying to get it to spill, so we're trying to get it to go one gap wider and make the guard go out here, so that when the mic now scrapes paint off this exchange tight, the mic is going to spill the puller. So now the end spills the fullback, the mic spills the puller, and we'd like to get the ball working out towards that strong safety. Okay, which they're going to have to have ways which is how RPOs start coming into the, to the fray and because they have to have a way to handle this. If they can't dig this out with the slot, they have to have ways to handle that, op that apex because that's where we're trying to send the ball. If they did try to possibly crack or get this body down on the slot, that is where we would have to replace with a free safety in our structure of how we play things. We are trying to get the ball sent to the outside on those off-tackle strong side runs we're trying to spill the ball to what we think is a free play, all right? But the only, the only reason we can do that is because the, the structure behind it allows us to play the overhang in a position where we think he can fit and be a potential free hitter, all right, and send the ball out to him so the ball runs east and west, not vertical, and we send the ball, all right, to a potential free hitter, all right? That is, that is what we would like to try and do, okay? If we drop the same scenario with something going back the other way, all right, so if we drop the same scenario in that structure of defense with maybe OF counter going back the other way,
So if they wanted to come back and maybe try and run some type of counter deal the other way, all right, where they had to go maybe back on the three or maybe try and scoop the three and put the center somewhere else if they wanted to, all right, they would work down, okay? If they could scoop the three, then maybe they would work possibly down on the one and back, all right, to the mic, okay? Or, all right, if, if depending on the angles and where they thought they can get to, all right, if they went um, down on the one, back on the mic, all right, and the guard would pull and try and kick the end, the uh, sniffer would wrap, all right, and if they got the end kicked, he'd like to insert himself there, possibly for that. Will linebacker, okay, but the idea is for us on defense, we want to get the, the, the ball sent somewhere where we have a free hitter. We'd like to get it sent to a plus one, okay, so depending on how they have to block the three technique side and what they're doing, all right, simplest scenario is we would try and ask this defensive end here off the down block, to squeeze and wrong arm this pull-up, okay? We would then ask our will off the recognition of the guard pull to get over the top, all right? And we would ask him to spill now what would be the fullback. So, again, this is why this is a scheme, selfish, uh, unselfish act on your players. You're asking this end to take himself virtually out of the play by wrong arming, taking his outside arm underneath this blocker and sending the ball and sending the puller out wide. Okay? You're then asking your will to have the recognition to understand that he's going to have to go over the top of that as tight as he can because we want the will to then spill the fullback. And now within our scheme, whether it's that guy or that guy, somebody's going to add themselves down to be the extra player that we are trying to send the ball to. Okay? So... When you're spilling the ball, all right, you're trying to get your ends to send the ball wider to free players, and then you're trying to equate the numbers. If they have pullers, you need to equate the numbers with a linebacker and a free hitter. You're always trying to get plus one on defense. So just having a linebacker is not enough because the puller takes the linebacker. So you need the end to spill, a linebacker to spill the next puller, and an extra body coming from an apex or a support defender somewhere, all right, to be a free hitter to clean up. So you're trying to send the ball out to the free hitter so that he's the plus one on the ball carry. That's essentially what you're trying to do in a spill scenario. The whole time that you're trying to do that, you're trying to make the ball go east and west, all right? Because the one thing you don't want in the run game is you want to deny the vertical entry of the run game at all possible costs. You don't want runs going that way. Okay, so that would be a spill scenario. That would be just a basic, uh, very generic look at, at plays that you would try to spill or what you would ask your ends to spill and then what you would ask your backers and your next available hitters or free hitters to do. Okay, in a spill scenario, and remember what I said, a spill scenario takes a, a team player, a scheme player, and somebody that is very, very unselfish because they're going to take themselves out of some plays when the ball gets bounced. When you tell that defensive end the wrong arm and make the ball go wide, he starts to realize he's not going to make a lot of tackles on those plays. you got to have a kid that's a team player. All right? Now, where I would look at, for me, at least the way we play defense, where I would look at a scenario of, of where we might box the ball is when we start to add guys into the pressure, all right, and we start to add a fifth or a sixth rusher and play some man concepts behind it. The easiest way to think about it is, you know, potentially a, um, a, a, a double eagle type look if you want to look at it that way. All right, so if you had um, some type of double eagle structure to where you had an end down in here, all right, and then maybe your will linebacker had to come up here and be off the edge, whatever your personnel is. And then you had a mic that was playing man with maybe a safety that was playing man. All right, your other safety's out here playing man. Your man on the corner, your man there. And then your free player might be somewhere in the middle of the field as a post defender or maybe an alley runner, depending on how aggressively you want to do things and what you're trying to stop from the other team. So in this situation now, okay, in this situation, I am going to try and box the runs if I can, okay? I am going to try and box the runs if I can, all right, because I want to send the ball back inside to where I know I have immediate help, 
Okay? Now, I'm not saying everybody that plays bare fronts boxes the ball. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that when you play bare front, you have to box the ball. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that when we play it as a five-man pressure deal in bare front, we box the ball. Okay? We try and keep the ball inside where I know I have man players, and then I've got to be able to free up those man players, and then I've got to be able to potentially add the free safety as an alley runner with the ball coming inside. Because the one thing that I know is that when I'm playing man outside, I know that any of these runoffs all right, are going to get my guys. They're all going to be out of that equation real quick. All right, so he's going to be gone, he's going to be gone, he's going to be gone. All right, so in that same scenario, if you had a strong side power run that you tried to spill, and again, how they would have to block this and where you might get your numbers free is a debate for a different time, but just in looking at the scenario, if you had a down block here with a down block here with a possible back block here, okay, and you had a defensive end that spilled the fullback, okay, and a mic that replaced off the spill, and they have that backside guard that's pulling, all right, so that's there, and that backside guard's pulling there, and that backside guard can account for the mic, you have got to come up with another player somehow. Now, whether that be this potential backside man player that you think, because of all these back blocks and, and potentially how you might play the willy off the backside of the hinge block, if you think he's a guy that can maybe run and overlap that, that's a possibility. If you think your free safety is an aggressive enough player to overlap that, that's a possibility. Okay? But that is the only chance you really have because in that scenario, if you spill the ball out to the strong safety and they run the strong safety off as a man player, he's never going to be there. So the Mike can't send the ball to the strong safety in that diagram of how we're playing defense. So what we choose to do when we play that style of defense is we choose to box everything back inside, okay, so that we ask this end to now be more aggressive up the field off of the down block and box the block of the fullback, okay? So now when the guard comes, at some point he is going to turn up in the hole, all right? But we feel in that structure of defense, we feel like there's more presence inside than there is outside with guys being ran off in man. So we feel better that if we box that, and they had to down block, the mic can then take on the puller there, and if he boxes that back, we feel like that's an easier play for our, uh, our weak safety to make, or if any of our interior guys beat a block, all right, depending on how we're playing those blocks. Right now, we're not looking at cross-facing anything or doing anything. We're just looking at generic scenarios. I feel better in that structure with these guys as box players, sending the ball back to these guys on the interior, and then potentially inside to him, depending on how aggressively you're playing him, I feel better doing that than I do sending the ball out to guys that are being run off in man, okay, and, and, and possibly having to ask a guy to overlap from the backside or the alley runner, all right, to do that. I feel more comfortable once we get into a five-man man free pressure in his bare front. I feel a lot more comfortable taking these guys aggressively off the ball and boxing. Now, again, what are we talking about? Is that how it has to be done? No. Is that how everybody does it? No. That's something that we do that I feel comfortable doing. I know when I get into bare structures, I know that we are going to box the ball with those kids. All right? I know that they are going to be more upfield players that are not going to squeeze the down block as hard. They're going to try and cause more havoc by, by getting up the field all right, and looking to make plays. All right? Now, when they box the ball there's a good chance that they won't make the play there either because the ball will get turned back inside, all right? But they can get off the ball a little bit more aggressively with an upfield demeanor when they don't have to react to the down block and take air off of it. So they can be a little bit more um, reckless per se when they box the ball than when they're a spill player. When they're a spill player, they got to have great eyes, all right? they got to have great technique because they got to understand when that block goes down, i got to go take the air out of it, because that next kick-out block is coming from the fullback or the guard on counter, whatever it may be, 
And I gotta get under that. Okay, so it, this would be a box scenario for us. This would be a scenario where I would try and turn all those runs back inside to where I feel more comfortable with those runs hitting. Okay, that's just my philosophy. That's just how I choose to play defense. All right, when I go to this structure, we are going to box the ball. It's what I feel comfortable doing. So that is a scenario or two different scenarios of when or where you might spill or when or where you might box. Okay, the pros and cons of it, again, getting back to it, spilling is a, is a scheme deal and a team deal with, with unselfish players. All right, spilling is a deal that takes good, I disappoint, all right, and, and good football players that are well trained on how to react to blocks. Boxing is a deal that allows the kids, in my opinion, to be a little bit more athletic, although they may not be able to just run around and make plays blind, all right, that's not what I'm saying, but as box players, they don't have to react as hard to that down block. They can be a little bit more aggressive with their get off getting up the field, right? And, and knowing that they can get a little bit deeper in the backfield and up the field and make the ball go underneath them because that's where we want the ball to go. So the box player probably can be a little bit more aggressive. He can have a worry, you know, concentrate on, on more on his get off, getting up the field. He can be a little bit deeper up the field. The spill player can't be up the field relatively at all. The spill player has got to be flat on the line of scrimmage. All right, so the box player probably can play a little bit freer. All right, maybe... You know, um, it kind of lets a kid get off the ball, per se, a little bit better, all right? But the spill theory is what you're going to find more and more teams starting to do now and how football is being played now. It's, it's spill the ball to a free hitter that they can't block. Offensively, it's when they spill the ball to free hitters, we got to throw RPOs or routes off the free hitters, or we got to crack those free hitters and send the ball to a corner, where if you watch a lot of NFL tape, I... I have recently got some tape from a friend of mine talking about the duo play. And when I watch that tape, a lot of times the duo play in the NFL is a tight end wing oriented play where they mash everything down. The, the, the back reads off the mic, jump cuts out, the corner's left unblocked, and the corners in the NFL don't tackle the backs. Okay? In, in you know, the, the football that we're playing, if, if I get the ball bounced to a strong safety or an outside linebacker, I don't know if that's as good, so we would have to crack him, crack the safety, and leave the corner on block so that if the ball got spilled, it got spilled out to the corner, and essentially that guy doesn't tackle your back is the theory cornerbacks don't want to tackle. All right? But normally you're trying to get the ball sent to a free hitter and, and a guy that's going to be extra in a spill theory. You're trying to get the ball east and west so it has no vertical entry. In a box theory, you're trying to get the ball to go back inside to where you think you have more bodies or more help, or you're getting it to go back inside because the guys outside have completely removed themselves from the run fit because they're playing man-to-man. -man. So for me, a lot of times when we're playing man structures, we are going to box the ball more often than not. When we're playing zone structures, we are going to spill the ball more often than not. Again, opinion, it's not a rule. It's not what you have to do. All right, there's some great teams whose ends get up the field and, and run like hell and they box, and there's some teams that play great defense spilling the ball. Personal choice, personal preference. All you got to do, in my opinion, is tie the two together. Tie how you're, you're playing those ends with how you're fitting your runs behind them, and I think you'll be good to go. As long as how you fit behind the ends fits what the ends are doing, I think you're good to go. You can play it either way. Again, 30, 40, 50 years ago, 3, 4, 50 defenses, boxing ends. That's all those kids did, and teams won a lot of games. So I'm not saying it can't be done. Today's uh, football is a little bit different, played a little bit differently. Um, but at the end of the day, that is my opinion on the pros and cons of spilling versus containing or boxing. I'd love to hear your comments on it. Love to hear how you do it or what you do or what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear other comments on videos you'd like me to do. All right, again, thanks to Jason Younglove for his comment on this video. All right, uh, hopefully I covered enough for you to kind of give you an understanding of pros and cons and why I would spill and why I would box. All right, always uh, remember to check out www.playfastfbclinic.com. Again, www.playfastfbclinic.com clinic.com for information on our first Playfest football clinic January 24th, 25th, 26th, 2020, uh, a little bit less than two months away in St. Augustine, Florida on the beach at the Embassy Suites. That website has 
Um, information on registering, information if you want to be a vendor, information on staying at the hotel at the Embassy Suites, so please check that website out. Also, I'll put my new Patreon website at the bottom in the description box. It's uh, www.patreon.com backslash Coach Mac, where it's basically this YouTube channel on steroids, where I do these videos with game clips. Um, I do webinars. I do live stream Q&As. I do a podcast. And uh, those videos and the podcast and some of the live stream Q&As, I will have guests and webinars will have guests, so you'll get other coaches giving you their opinions on how to play football, so it's not always just strictly my opinion. All right, remember to click the subscribe button. Remember to click the notifications button so you know when we do videos. Thumbs up or thumbs down, like or don't like the video, as long as you're interacting with it. All right, it gives us an idea, all right, of what people want and what people don't want. Leave a comment. I'll always respond. Appreciate everything you do. Remember, you won't play well till you play fast. I'll catch you guys next time.